If every hour you spent on television, you spent reading your Bible or listening to your Bible being read to you, you would finish the entire Bible in four weeks or less. And we have more than a quarter of Christians never reading their Bible at all. Hey guys, Joe here, back to the Word. Today with an exciting video, Why is Bible Reading Hard? Some encouragement, tips, and helps. I'm excited to hop into two chapters from this book with a new series I want to do, just highlighting chapters from books. Not doing a video on the whole book, but just pulling content from a chapter, reflecting on it, and then sharing some of that content with all of you. Maybe that would encourage you to get the book. Maybe it would just encourage those who have the book to pull it off the shelf and enjoy it together. Today, we're going to be covering word intake on this video and I'm glad that you've tuned in. I just want to start out with some stats about some of the things why Bible reading is hard and why we need to get into it. He says this, only 11% of Americans read the Bible every day. More than half read it less than once a month or never at all. Only 18% Less than two of every 10 Christians who claim to be born again read the Bible every day. Worst of all, 23%, that's almost one quarter of Christians who claim to be born again, almost one in four, say they never read the Word of God. That is horrible. Now, those numbers are from when this book was originally written in 1990-91, is those reports and citations. But that is crazy, and I don't think it's gotten much better. This is from the revised and updated version that came out in 2014 as it was revised. He goes on to say this, which is startling, and I know it's only gotten worse in our day, that if most people would exchange their TV time for scripture reading, they'd finish reading the entire Bible in four weeks or less. If every hour you spent on television, you spent reading your Bible or listening to your Bible being read to you, you would finish the entire Bible in four weeks or less. And we have more than a quarter of Christians never reading their Bible at all. Bible intake is not being taken seriously, and we need to be people of the Word who read God's Word. But why is it so hard? Two things. One from R.C. Sproul, who's quoted in this chapter from his book, Knowing Scripture. He says, why do so many Christians neglect the study of God's word? R.C. Sproul said it painfully well. Here then is the real problem of our negligence. We fail in our duty to study God's word, not so much because it is difficult to understand, Not so much because it is dull and boring, but because it is work. Our problem is not a lack of intelligence or a lack of passion. Our problem is that we are lazy. R.C. Sproul, I think, has something correct there. Many of us have gotten lazy or are lazy in our Bible study and time in God's Word. And we need some encouragement, some help, some some prodding, some community, some push forward to be in God's word the way we should so that we can mature in godliness and Christ likeness. One of the other reasons besides laziness that it's so hard to read God's word actually comes from J.I. Packer, who's quoted in this and actually the foreword to R.C. Sproul's book. And he says it this way, it's about our enemy. That Satan wants to keep us out of God's word. Not only does the flesh work against us in that we're lazy, but our enemy works against us. From J.I. Packer, he says, If I were the devil, one of my first aims would be to stop folks from digging into the Bible. Knowing that it is the word of God, teaching men to know and love and serve the God of the world, I should do all I could to surround it with the spiritual equivalent of pits, thorn hedges, and man traps to frighten people off. At all costs, I should want to keep them from using their minds in a disciplined way to get the measure of its message, to get from God's word what he has for us. So not only is our flesh and our laziness against us, but also the enemy. And so I want to encourage you today with some tips, some encouragement, some helps for getting into God's word 
from Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life by Donald Whitney. I'm going to go right to the beginning and just flip through some of these key moments with you guys, personally reflect on them and encourage you with the words that are here. He starts off by talking the whole book as a whole on spiritual disciplines for godliness, that we need to have disciplines in our lives that point us towards God. And then he gets to Bible intake, which takes up two chapters and is the first discipline he gets to. And he says this, no spiritual discipline is more important than the intake of God's word on page 22. He goes on to say the most transforming practice available to us is the disciplined intake of scripture. And then he goes on to say, and it's sub disciplines. We need to hear it. Merely listening to God inspired words is not the point. The purpose of all methods of Bible intake is to keep it. It's not just enough to read it and move on or, you know, to spend time and move on. We need to keep it, to meditate on it, and let God do his work in us. He says, we are to discipline ourselves to go and hear the word of God. He gets into reading God's word where he shares some of those stats about Americans and Christians not reading the Bible on page 27. Just very convicting. And then he gets to, here are three practical suggestions for consistent success in Bible readings. Here's some practical helps that will help you, the one, the Christian who wants to follow God, read God's word. He says, first, find the time. We are busy people. Time gets away from us. If we don't plan time to be in God's word, we will fail. We will fail to spend time in God's word. And then he gets to that quote about if most people would exchange their TV time for scripture reading, they'd finish reading the entire Bible in four weeks. Many people have never read a thousand page book before and get discouraged at the sheer length of the Bible. But he says, do you realize that the recorded readings of the Bible have proven that you can read through the entire Bible in 71 hours? Just 71 hours. And he's like, that's why we would get through the entire Bible if we substituted our TV watching for Bible reading or Bible listening in three to four weeks. He said the majority of Christians never read God's word all the way through in a lifetime of decades. That's just miserable. That should not be the case. Plan a time to read God's word. I don't know what works for you. For me personally, time in the morning is really good before the static of the day, before the tasks of the day take it away from me. I like to spend time reading God's word, but sometimes that doesn't happen. And so later in the afternoon or even sometimes in the evening as I get home, God will convict me and I'm drawn to a meal in God's word and I need that time to make it through the day. And I pray that God would grow the capacity in you to find the time, but also to need him in a way that it drives you into his word. Moving along, the second practical suggestion is to find a reading plan. There are many out there. You can search easily for Bible reading plans. The McShaney one is um, a well-known one. There's others as well. There's ones on version. There's ones that you can find free online. There's um, the F260 plan is what I'm currently reading, where you read five times uh, five days a week through key chapters of the Bible. Not every chapter is read. There's other um, similar plans. McShaney one, you go through the whole Old Testament once, the Psalms twice, and the New Testament twice in the course of a full year. You can find those online, but pick a plan and stick with it. It will help you. And I would say this, if you're a perfectionist who struggles with once you miss a plan, sticking with it, I say just keep going. I know a couple devotions like from Paul David Tripp, New Morning Mercies, Crossway Just Released, Daily Joy for Women, Daily Strength for Men. They have dates associated with them. Just go to the right date and keep going. Don't let one or two days miss discourage you from spending time in God's Word. Spurgeon's morning and evenings may be something you want to do as well. I know there's many others who have yearly, even seasonal devotionals that would be super helpful. Just pick it up. Just move forward. Um, don't come to God. You know, life is too important and this time is too important to come to God and say, hey, I messed this one up, so I'm just not going to do it. No, get back in the fight. Keep going. Keep after it. The third practical suggestion is to find at least one word, phrase, or verse to meditate on each time you read. 
This is something I'm learning right now and recently have been focused on is writing down one line or one verse in a journal and coming back to it throughout the day, praying it, thinking about it, not just um, doing my Bible reading so I can strike uh, you know, it off the list and hit the checkbox so I know I did it, but actually remembering it so that I can pray it, meditate on it, and think about it in my life. And he said, that's what we need to do. He says, um, we need to study God's word. Jerry Bridges put it, reading gives us breath and study gives us depth. We need to know the full breadth, the full width of what God is saying in his word, but also study to get the depth from God's word. And he has some encouragements on that. And then we hit on page 32, this uh, quote from R.C. Sproul in um, uh, Knowing Scripture, the one that I mentioned earlier about the fact that we fail in our duty to study God's word, not so much because it is difficult to understand, not so much because it is dull or boring, but because it is work. Studying God's word is work, but it is work that has many benefits. And you may not see the benefits immediately, but over time you will see those benefits. And he says, the problem is that many of us are just lazy. And so if that's you, I want this to be an encouragement to to um, renew your commitment to being in God's word, to not let it fall off, but to to renew that commitment to get out of it. It says, don't let a feeling of inadequacy keep you from the delight of learning the Bible on your own. Dig into God's word. So then we hit the um, end of this first chapter on word intake. Talks about your growth in godliness is greatly affected by the quality of your Bible intake. So make your time in scripture a priority. And it goes through some other helpful tips for being in God's word and having encouragement for being in God's word. It ends with this really long quote from a Welsh pastor named Jeffrey Thomas about scripture. And just part of that quote says, Keep after God's word. You may not understand all of it at first. He says, let the word break over your heart and mind again and again as the years go by. And imperceptibly, there will come great change in your attitude and outlook and conduct. God's word is working on your soul, working on your mind, working on you behind the scenes. It says, you will probably be the last to recognize these changes. Often you will feel very small because increasingly the God of the Bible will become to you so wonderfully great. But go on reading it until you can read no longer. And then you will not need the Bible anymore because when your eyes close for the last time in death and never again read the word of God in scripture, you will open them to the word of God in the flesh. That same Jesus of the Bible whom you have known for so long standing before you to take you forever to his eternal home. What a sweet picture to spend time in God's word to the moment your eyes close and you open your eyes to see the word of the God in flesh in Jesus Christ. That's on page 35. Then we move on to chapter three of this book, and it's the second chapter on Bible intake. He says, for those who are reading this book specifically, which you know, some of you may not do, some of you may have done or would do, is read. He said, you already are reading God's word and you're probably already studying. If you're reading this book, you're probably already reading God's word, studying it. He says, maybe you're just not making the best use of it. You're reading it, like I mentioned earlier, checking off the box, moving on throughout your day. And so he covers really the areas of meditating and memorizing, which is big for Dr. Whitney, and also um, practical application and, and acting it out and being doers of the word and not just hearers. And that's what this whole chapter is about. He says, the reality is that you may not be the problem at all. The problem may simply be your method, that you're just reading it and then moving on with your day. And you're meant to meditate, to memorize, and to apply what you're reading. And so he goes through 17 helps for <laughs> memorization. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but he gets after the point that until the verses are hidden in your heart, they aren't available to use with your mouth. Um, Providing timely guidance for ourselves is one of the benefits of memorizing God's word. He says, scripture memory is like reinforcing steel to a sagging 
faith. We want reinforcement for our faith, and that's why we memorize. This is most of the time memorizing is mainly a problem of motivation. He says, well, sometimes we just don't aren't motivated. So he says, have a plan. Write out the verses. He says, draw pictures or reminders. Memorize the verses word perfectly. He says, memorize it word for word. Spend the time to memorize things word for word. He says, find a method of accountability. Review and meditate every day. He says, the goal is not to see how many verses you can memorize. The goal is godliness, that over this time, as you memorize God's word, you would look more like him, be closer to him, and living out and walking as Christ walked and as God would have us to live. And moving on, he gets into the meditating on God's word, the benefits and the methods. He defines meditation. This idea of meditation for the Christian is letting the Bible brew in our brain. It's not Eastern meditation where we're trying to empty everything that's there and just have emptiness or what they would call peace. No, in scripture, what we're talking about meditation is having God's word in our mind and then letting it brew, letting it stir, letting our mind work on that so that the Holy Spirit can teach us what God means by it. And he goes through some examples of doing just that from scripture that are really good. Um, and so on meditation, so like the med- meditation, he says, here are 17 methods of meditating on scripture. And he goes through how to do this. He said, emphasize different words, rewrite the text in your own words, formulate a principle from the text. Like what does it teach? Kind of coming up with a main idea. He's just thinking about illustrations, look for applications of the text, ask how the text points to the law and the gospel, ask how the text points to something about Jesus, pray through the text. I'm skipping some of these, memorize the text. He says, ask Joseph Hall questions of the text. There's like 10 questions here that Joseph Hall, a Puritan, was known for asking of the text. And you can do some deep study methods that might help you meditate. He says, set and discover a minimum number of insights from the text. But then this encouragement at the end, before he hits a play, he says, don't rush. He says, take time. As you think about Bible intake, you can't apply everything. So I'm encouraging you to just latch on to, even from this chapter, from encouragements I've given you, one thing and start doing that right. And then God will take care of the rest. We don't have to do everything. Find a couple things, one or two things to apply to help you get closer to God and then be faithful in doing them. When you fail, pick yourself back up, keep doing them. God will reward that investment and that faithful seeking after him. He then gets to applying God's words, the benefits and methods about application. He says, expect to discover application. And he goes on to say, meditate on application. How can I apply this? Ask application oriented questions and then um, continue in that way. Here's what he ends the chapter with. He says this, most of us would consider ourselves to be doers of the word and not merely hearers. Prove it. He says, prove it. You've got to prove it. He says, As one widely respected translation of the Bible, been the NASB says in renders for James 1.22, prove yourselves doers of the word. How will you prove that you are a doer of the word of God as it's been presented to you here? And then he goes into the fact that the enemy is going to try to keep us from God's word with the quote from J.I. Packer. He says, despite the difficulty and spiritual opposition, are you willing at all costs to begin using your mind in a disciplined way to feed on the word of God for the purpose of godliness? And that's the question to end the chapter. And I have the same for you today. Just like you potentially... I have struggled at times to be in God's word, to make time for Bible intake. I don't always do memory and meditation well, but I've tried to step up in recent weeks and even in recent years in my life to do those things better. And I want to encourage you along that journey as well. The recent thing that I've been doing in my life is what I mentioned briefly earlier is trying to better hold on to one phrase one verse, one thing I write in my journal, 
and then think about throughout the day that I might pray, apply, and meditate. And just to keep it there in the forefront of my brain. For you, it may be a different step. Maybe you've never had a time, and that's what you need to do. Maybe you've never had a plan, and you need to pick a plan. There's lots out there. If you need help, just message me, and I'd love to help you find the plan that's right for you. And then maybe you're just like me. You need help and encouragement to memorize, to meditate, and then apply. And so I just encourage you, whatever step it is, research it, take it. You won't regret it as you grow closer to God, and He desires to draw near to you. So that's all I have for this video. I pray that it was encouraging. If you have any helps, encouragements, comments, questions, I'd love to see them in the description below or in the comments below that is. And so until next time, just continue to read, treasure, and follow the word. See you guys soon. Blessings.